IELTS Writing Task 1, Lesson 4, Pie Charts Pie charts can show numbers, but they always show percentages. Let's look at an easy example using the following topic. The favourite sports of a class of 20 children. Here's the pie chart. We see four sports, tennis, rugby, swimming and football, and the chart could show numbers of children, like this. And we could write sentences like this one. Football is the favourite sport of 10 children in the class. Instead of numbers, the pie chart could show percentages, like this. And then we could write, 50% of the children in the class prefer football to any other sport. Or, half of the class said that football was their favourite sport. But remember, even if you don't see the percentages, you can still say half of the class or 50% of the class because we can still see that 10 out of 20 children preferred f football. And even if you don't see those numbers, we can still see percentages or proportions in the pie chart. The full pie chart is 100%, so it looks like football is approximately 50% we can say around 50% of the children in the class prefer football to any other sport. So the key thing to remember with pie charts is the full pie is always 100%. Pie charts can show changes over time. For example, years, you might see a pie chart for the year 1999 and another one for the year 2009. The categories are the same, so we can talk about the numbers increasing or decreasing from the first year to the second year. But pie charts don't always show changes over time. They might show two countries. For example, this is the pie chart for children in the UK and we could have another pie chart for children in Australia. In this case, you can't talk about the numbers increasing or decreasing. You can only compare the two countries. Another type of item you might see is simply school A and school B. It doesn't have to be countries. Again, you're comparing the numbers. You can't talk about the numbers increasing or decreasing because there is no time shown. You can only talk about increase, decrease when there are two different times or a time period. So your job is to compare the percentages. That's the main thing. But you can also compare numbers if numbers are shown. Once you've written your introduction, you're going to do two types of comparison. First, make a very general comparison in your summary or overview paragraph, that's paragraph two. And second, compare specific figures, specific percentages or numbers or both, and that's for your details paragraphs, paragraphs three and four. Now let's look at our full pie chart question for today. Here's the question that I'm going to use. The charts below show household spending patterns in two countries between 1980 and 2008. So household spending patterns means the money spent by people living in one house, an average house. We've got the two countries, UK and New Zealand, and on the left you can see 1980 and 2008. And the spending is in five categories. We've got spending on food and drink, utility bills, transport, leisure and other. Our job is to compare those pie charts, compare the percentages of spending in the two different countries and in both years. As usual, we're going to write a four paragraph essay, introduction, overview, two paragraphs of details and no conclusion. If you're not sure why I'm saying no conclusion, please watch the introduction lesson for writing task one that I've done. You'll see my explanation there. Let's start then with the introduction. The technique is to paraphrase the question. If we look at the question, all we need to do is go through it bit by bit, changing a few words. If we start with the charts below show, we can easily change that to the pie charts compare. And then we move on to household spending patterns. I'm going to just check the chart for this one. The household spending patterns refers to the spending on these five categories. So I'm going to change that a little bit more and mention the categories. 
the pie charts compare five categories of household expenditure. So I've introduced the idea that there are five categories there and expenditure instead of spending. Next, easy, in two countries, in the UK and New Zealand, and between 1980 and 2008, in the years 1980 and 2008. So the full introduction is done. The pie charts compare five categories of household expenditure in the UK and New Zealand in the years 1980 and 2008. Now we can move on to paragraph two, the summary or overview paragraph. Two sentences and we need two main points. I've had a good look at this pie chart and made my choices for the overview already. You might, might need to look at it in a bit more detail and think about it, but here are my choices anyway. I noticed firstly that in both countries, if we look at food and drink, we see a decrease between the two years. So there's a similarity there between both countries. And also in both countries, if we look at utility bills, we can see an increase from 1980 to 2008. Notice I'm looking for very general things and I'm looking at both countries together. Are there any big similarities or big differences? Uh, I've pointed out two similarities between the countries. Now I'm going to look at one big difference. I think the biggest difference is the leisure category. Much higher figures for the UK in both years. So two similarities and one big difference is what I've found. Let's see how I wrote that in my overview. It is noticeable that the proportion of spending on food and drink fell in both countries over the 28 year period, while spending on utility bills rose. Those are the two similarities that I pointed out. Second sentence. Also, UK residents spent a significantly larger percentage of their household budgets on leisure than their New Zealand counterparts. So there I've talked about the big difference that I found, which was leisure spending. And a nice phrase at the end, their New Zealand counterparts. That means the same group of people in the other country, in New Zealand in this case. So again, all I've done for my overview is talked about two similarities that I noticed and one big difference with no numbers. No numbers are mentioned in here. We'll come on to the numbers next. And that brings us on to the details paragraphs, paragraphs three and four. Starting with paragraph three, we need to look at the chart again and decide what to put in this paragraph. I'm going to start with food and drink, this category. And as we said in the overview, we've got from both countries, we can see a decrease there over the years, the two years. And then in this paragraph, I'll talk about utility bills and talk about that increase that we mentioned in both countries. Notice that what I've done there is I've chosen the same information as in the overview, but we're going to describe it in much more detail now with the numbers. Here's how I did it. In 1980, 29% of an average New Zealand household budget went on food and drink, while the equivalent figure for a UK home was 23%. By 2008, expenditure on food and drink had fallen by 4% in New Zealand and by a full 10% in the UK. By contrast, both countries saw an increase in expenditure on utility bills for the average home, from 27% to 31% in New Zealand, and from 26% to 28% in the UK. So what have we done there? As I said, it's the same information as the first sentence of my overview. That's an interesting technique to use. You take the first sentence of your overview and you expand on it in much more detail. It doesn't always work for every question, but here it does. So what have we got in this paragraph? We've got two categories only, food and drink and utility bills, and we've made comparisons between both years and both countries.
Let's do the same thing for paragraph 4 now. We'll look at the chart and decide what to put in this paragraph first. We'll start with leisure, the next category to describe, and we've got much higher figures in the UK than in New Zealand, so we can talk about that. We mentioned that in the overview, but we'll say it in more detail now. And we'll finish off with something that we didn't mention in the overview. We'll mention transport and the other costs. Let's see what I wrote in my paragraph 4. Leisure activities accounted for the highest proportion of UK household spending in both years, but only the third highest proportion in New Zealand. In fact, in 2008, New Zealanders spent only half as much in relative terms on recreation, 17%, as UK residents, 34%. Last sentence. In both countries, transport costs and other costs took roughly 15% and 10% of household budgets, respectively. What have we got in that paragraph then? We've got three categories. Leisure, which I've called recreation later, it's the same thing. Transport and other costs. And we've compared the years and the countries in those three categories. And because we have no conclusion in writing task one, that's the full report finished. Before we look at the vocabulary from this report, I want to give you some tips that we've seen today. First, don't describe each country separately. And don't describe each year separately. We want to compare countries and years together. That's the main thing. Don't separate the countries or years into separate paragraphs. Mention all five categories. We had food and drink, leisure, utilities, etc. You need to say at least one thing about all five if you can. Divide the categories into two groups for the two details paragraphs. So instead of doing paragraph three about one year or one country, and then paragraph four about the other year or other country, I divided the paragraphs into category groups. So I talked about food and drink and the utility bills in paragraph three, and then the other three categories in paragraph four. The category called other is not important. Just because the other category had the smallest percentage, it doesn't mean that you need to mention it. Often we look for the highest and lowest, but when we have a category called other, that's a mix of lots of different things that we don't really care about with an other category, I would just mention it only once at the end of the report like I did in paragraph 4. Don't write leisure was 34%. That doesn't make sense. You have to write household spent 34% of their money on leisure. Make sure you get the figures described properly. That's one of the key things in writing task 1. Those are my tips from this uh, report this lesson, look over those again and make sure you understand what I mean by each one. Now finally let's look at the vocabulary from this lesson. As usual we're going to focus on paraphrasing, comparing and language for describing changes that we've seen. Here's the good language that I think an examiner would notice. Spending came from the question and I changed it to expenditure, spent and costs. Proportion of spending percentage of household budget, the equivalent figure for a UK home, all of these different ways of talking about the spending. Fell, rose, saw an increase in, that's the change language. By 2008, expenditure had fallen. Had fallen is a past perfect verb structure and we use that when we've got the word by with a date. So by 2008, something had already happened, expenditure had fallen. If you're using in 2008, you probably just say in 2008, expenditure fell. So notice that difference between by and in, by with the past perfect. Spent a significantly larger percentage, that's comparison, than their New Zealand counterparts. I mentioned that earlier counterparts meaning 
the same group of people in that other country. It's a good word to use. 29% of an average household budget went on. So describing these numbers correctly and the words household budget, uh, that's a good phrase to use. And you can say the budget goes on something, in this case in the past, went on. While, by contrast, because of course we're comparing countries and years, leisure accounted for the highest proportion. Spent half as much in relative terms. Well, the spending, we don't know the actual amount of spending, all we know is the percentage of spending. That's why I've used this phrase in relative terms, relative to the amount of money that is spent in total by each household. And recreation, finally, instead of leisure, I had this um, synonym, recreation. So that's the vocabulary that I think examiners would notice. If you print the worksheet, watch the lesson again, and analyse each sentence carefully, I'm sure that will help you to understand everything I've said today a bit more clearly. Next lesson, we'll look at tables.